Hi everyone, this is Mike Smell, Product Manager for Sim Studio. In this video, I'd like to talk to you about repairing problematic CAD geometry using Sim Studio tools. We'll take a look at two exercises, one where we look at the general workflow for importing CAD geometry and we're repairing that CAD geometry to prepare it for simulation. And then we'll take a deeper look specifically at using the modeling tools inside of Sim Studio tools to clean up and repair CAD geometry prior to simulation. Here we are inside of Sim Studio, and again, we're going to take a look in this first exercise at the general repair workflow inside of Sim Studio tools after importing potentially dirty CAD geometry. So we'll first start by talking about the preferences for importing models in Sim Studio tools, where you as the user have the ability to control how we um, diagnose and fix issues. Um, so these controls are here available to you and you can modify those to best suit your needs. When a CAD model is imported with dirty geometry or Sim Studio tools, we'll automatically put you into the repair browser. You'll notice here the browser looks different than it does if we were in the default view where we can see all of the individual parts. And when we're in the repair browser, you'll notice that it will give us indications about ge geometry errors that we may need to fix uh, before we proceed with the simulation process, specifically um, geometry issues that could potentially uh, impact the success of our meshing process. So we'll take a look at each of these and you'll notice that Sim Studio Tools is going to uh, flag the issues as well as in the lower right corner of the screen, give us repair information about what's wrong with the geometry at the highlighted region, as well as a potential solution. So in this scenario, you're going to see that um, it recommends trying the autofix command to deal with this illegal edge. So we'll take that feedback and we can simply right click on that issue and choose autofix. In this scenario, we can choose to autofix and it will fix both of the issues that were documented as problematic um, regions of this geometry. So you'll notice now our potential issues are marked with a green check mark and that we're still in the repair browser. So through the autofix command, we've completed the tasks to repair that geometry and we would be ready to proceed by sending this geometry to our simulation tool. Now let's take a look at another example. What we just completed was the basic workflow for going through the repair process in Sim Studio tools. You import a CAD geometry, the self-diagnostic tools are going to run, they're going to give you some feedback about the quality of the model. In a majority of cases, Sim Studio tools is pretty robust and we'll be able to use the autofix commands to deal with those as we saw in the last example. In this scenario, we've imported a much more complex plastic part and you'll notice that the repair browser has um, identified a number of issues with this geometry. In this scenario, we'll start by taking a look at what some of these look like in the same way that we did in the previous example. We've selected one of the tolerance issues, the Repair feedback screen tells us we could try autofix, um, but then we might also need to consider unstitching faces and restitching. So if we take a closer look at this region of the model, we're going to find that the geometry is really not what we would expect for this region of the model. You can see here as the ribs kind of come over to this flat plate, there is um, problems with what that transition looks like. This is probably going to be one of those scenarios where even if the autofix command was able to deal with the gaps at the vertices or our geometry and topology problems, we'd probably still not get the uh, shape that we were that we intended to to first model. So in that case, we'll use the modeling tools inside of Sim Studio tools to go ahead and essentially deconstruct this geometry to some degree and then reconstruct it, um, working with it at the surface level. 
Now, when we go through this process, um, what we're going to do is again use the general modeling tools inside of Sim Studio Tools. But to make this much easier, since we're going to be unstitching surfaces and stitching surfaces back together and doing some modeling commands, we want to focus only on the specific region of the model uh, of interest, and then we can stitch it all back together in the end. So what we'll do is create a body to use to split this geometry up so that we can do our repair work on this specific region, and then we'll merge everything back together. So let's take a look at how we would do that. The first thing I will do is go ahead and create an offset plane from this top surface a small amount such that I can create a basic primitive on that plane that's going to enclose the region that I want to separate out from the bigger part of the geometry. So I'll just create a rough sketch, use my basic commands, and in, rather than cut, I'm going to go ahead and create a new body. And I can see that I've pretty much captured with the cut preview all of the space that I really need to work on. So I'll say new body. <clears throat> now once I have this I'll click OK and we're going to go ahead and use the split body command <clears throat> and now I'll click the body to split is our main body uh, our main body for the model and the splitting tool is going to be <clears throat> the new body that we just created. Now once that's complete, you'll notice in the bodies command I have uh, the body that we just created. And then if I expand my assembly, get to the bodies folder and I've got two bodies. One which is the target that we want to work on repairing uh, and then the remaining geometry. So let's go ahead and hide that remaining geometry. Now in this scenario, what we're going to do is unstitch the geometry that we're left with. Come to modify and choose unstitch and we'll select that body. <clears throat> now we're going to start by deleting some of the geometry that we believe to be problematic. So we know that this top surface is going to be an issue so we'll delete that by simply selecting and pressing the delete key. Uh, we know that some of our faces here on the, the front and as the filleted sections are going to be problematic. So we'll select and delete some of these as well. Now once those deletes are completed, we'll tidy up some additional ones here. we can go ahead and start to think about patching this model back together. Now, the next step that we will look at is you know, starting with the simplest section and use the ge some of the geometry that we have to, to take advantage of repairing uh, the faces that we need rather than creating them from scratch. So here we've got a pretty clean face. You'll notice that it has a small sliver type surface in it. Uh, what we'll do first is we'll stitch these two together and the reason we're going to stitch these together is we're, because we will then use the merge command to create, turn this into a single face. And by doing that, that merge, we will then be able to copy and paste this face and use it on this side to create the thickness of that rib. So we'll do this on both sides of the model. First, stitch those together. And we'll use the merge command to merge those together. And then once that's complete, we can pick these faces, use the right click menu to say find in browser.
We'll scroll down and you'll see that's body 195. We can right click and copy. And then right click again to paste that geometry. Now we can adjust the manipulator, it gets put in space. But what we'll want to do is we're going to snap, we're going to want to snap this new face to our existing geometry. And to do that, we'll set the pivot. So we'll click set pivot, pick the point that we want to use to control our position, which is that lower corner. Click the done button. And then you'll see we can drag or we can click a spot on the model to snap it into place. So we'll do that same thing then on the other side. Again, select the face, find in browser. See it highlights body 196. We'll right click and copy. And again, right click and paste. Move it out into space. Update the pivot point to that same back corner. Pull it over and pick the corner that we want to snap it to. Now you can see as we're progressing along here, we've we've reconstructed the ribs, and we can then start to go through the process of closing these ribs. And to do that, uh, we'll use the gap fill command on the idealize panel of the toolbar. And this gives us multiple options uh, to fill. We can extend two faces, extend one face, we can loft between faces, or we could do a boundary patch if we had a closed closed face. So uh, for, for what we're doing here with filling the ribs, we're going to do a loft between two faces. So if we zoom in and we pick these edges as we go along, click OK. And we want to re-execute a command quickly. We can simply um, right click and choose to repeat gap fill uh, in the vertical position at 12 o'clock. Or you'll see as we do it the next time, we can simply use the gesturing commands uh, to do that just the same, which will help speed up the process. So that's completed. We can right click gesture to the right to say OK, right click gesture vertically to say repeat. And we'll go on healing up this rib. And each time here we're using the loft between faces. So we've done that for the rib on the left. We'll do that the same here for the rib on the right side of this section. And certainly as you get more familiar with the gesturing, this will speed up the ease of use as you move through your modeling commands. Now that we have the ribs completed, you will see that we have to fill in the connection between the ribs and then this midsection that we didn't need to delete. So again, we'll repeat the gap fill. We'll use the loft between faces to close these sections up. And that section's about complete. So with this done, we have our top section that will need to be closed, as well as this section here at the bottom that was uh, removed. So let's first go ahead and try to stitch back together what we have. And we'll just box select the entire model and we'll see any areas marked in red are those that are going to be sections that won't close. And we know that we didn't patch this small front face or this top. So we'll go ahead and complete the stitch. Okay, so now that that's stitched, let's go ahead and try to fill in uh, this bottom section, so we'll use gap fill and we'll use the boundary patch tool and we'll move along 
picking the edge the boundary edges of our opening and we'll go ahead and patch that in we see that that works well so now we'll go ahead and move into um, closing up the top so we'll use the gap fill command again uh, we'll use the boundary patch we'll activate the chaining we see that it grabs the chain Oops. If I select the right edge, it will recognize the chain. We see a previews closes in as we would expect. It looks like this surface actually um, didn't stitch in properly for us, so we can go ahead and delete that face and again use our gap fill. This time we'll try it with the boundary patch and see if we can get that closed in. So there we go. We've got that stitched in, and this model is back to being a solid. So it's all stitched and healed together. Remember, we have two bodies, the section we healed and the bigger, bigger model. So again, we can come in to modify, use our solid combine. So our target, our tool, we'll choose to join that. And we're back to having a single solid body. So in this workflow, what we've what we've demonstrated is that there may be times when your geometry is too complex to simply use the automatic fix commands inside of Sim, Sim Studio tools, but the modeling tools themselves will allow you to very easily section out a part of the model, deconstruct it, reconstruct it with the geometry that you need, and then merge it all back together. I hope the repair workflows that we talked about in this video are very useful to you. Uh, please reach out to us if you have any questions. Thanks for watching.